reviews, discussions, and theories about films and horror, sci-fi, and genre, this is The Horror Deconstruction. Like, share, and subscribe to hear more. What's up, everybody? It's The Horror Deconstruction. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, most likely on YouTube. Give us a like, share, and subscribe. 31 Days of Horror Reviews with your host, Comp, here. And today, the film we are talking about is the very controversial The Hunt from 2020. Twelve strangers wake up in a clearing. They don't know where they are or how they got there. They don't know how, how, why they've been chosen for a very specific reason or the purpose. The Hunt, directed by Craig Zobel, written by Nick Cuse, Damon Lindelof. Yes, that Damon Lindelof, starring Betty Gilpin, Hilary Swank, and Ike Barinholtz. So this is a film that had a lot of controversy before it even got out. It got sidestepped by a lot of major issues in the U.S., which is gun violence and political violence so the first strike against it before it even came out is well let's just say what the film is about it's about uh elite liberals that put on a hunt against uh let's say red state uh voters and uh this is this is a very tricky film that this company thought they were going to try to release (laughs) at a time where one side says one side says the other is too much of a being too much of a pussy to handle reality while the other side is saying they're being too much of a pussy to handle reality and guess what happens one side was uh too pussy to to take the reality just like the other so there are crying babies and uh they got this movie uh basically blacklisted and not shown because there was such an uproar on the internet you know the, the internet was supposed to be free speech or whatever but it ends up always being sort of hate speech on one side or the other and uh the reason why i didn't bring danny into this episode because it would have been three hours long and he, would have, <laughs> he probably would have said something illegal in the episode uh so the ironic thing is i think some of the, the most of the writers of this film were are like liberal people i'm just guessing uh damon lindelof is a, a liberal guy he's the guy who obviously wrote lost he wrote the phenomenal uh, two series, The Wa- Watchmen, which got a lot of shit for some reason. Uh, we know why, but I'm not going to bring it up here. Um, and also uh, the, the Leftovers, a fantastic series. So anyway, he, I, I didn't even know that he had written this until I saw it after. I had, I had taken a long time from seeing it because I just didn't want to see any political fucking movie at all uh, because I'd seen it on TV so many times. And then I w- watched it, and I was surprised at how well it was it, it was made. Uh, that's what the reviews I had always heard. Uh, so apparently, this is a film where uh, both sides politically are are looked at as being aggressors on this type in this type of film, which is whatever you're gonna either side you're gonna be on, you're gonna be whatever. That's not right, uh, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it has the great thing about this film is, and and I feel it's a, sh- a super fucking shame why this was this movie was ignored and kind of buried because of all the political horse shit. And obviously the mass shootings in the United States also made this an issue for people watching it because there was mass shootings like every other week in the United States. And one of the big issues, oh, one of the, the, the main things that I, liked, I loved about this film, the main thing I liked about this film was Betty Gilpin. And Betty Gilpin was in the series Glow, which unceremoniously because of the plague got canceled because they could not you know, keep all those contract players for so long off the set. Uh, she was on that series about female wrestlers. Great show. I've only seen the first season, uh, and because it kind of cuts off before there's any finale, I have not watched the second season. I kind of just feel bad watching that. But Betty Gilpin plays the main character, Crystal, and sh- this is such a unique main character in a film, almost like uh, just like Ashes to Evil Dead, or you know, uh, I-, I can't even think of any other main characters from like Blade is to Blade and stuff like that. Betty Gilpin's character in this movie, she is such a weirdo. Uh, it is incredible. Her performance in this movie is so good because I, I can't even explain her mannerisms or the way she's not like a wacky character, but she really is a, a weird, a weirdo, a huge weirdo. And I'm not, I don't want to spoil the film, but the film alone is worth seeing Betty Gilpin's uh, performance in it. She's fucking, she's just great in this movie. Uh, just the way that she acts, and because she, it's it's sort of a, a your next where there's a female lead who takes care of business, 
And uh, I, I'm sure there was somebody on some side crying about a woman being a lead and be able to take care of herself in this movie, like always with every fucking movie. Just uh, you know, if you don't even, if even if you don't believe that is a case where women can take care of herself, it's a, it's a movie, okay? Whatever, fine. I believe women can take care of themselves. So uh, in this movie. She uh, is, an, uh, we don't know about that later, but she was like sort of ex-military. That's the only spoiler I'm really going to give for, for this film. And uh, she is uh, she is just so weird. She's such a weirdo. And the violence is fantastic. We get this great opening with some semi-protagonists, including Ike Barinholtz, if you remember him from Mad TV. Emma Roberts. Uh, I always like to see Emma Roberts. Emma Roberts is underutilized actress or actor, whoever you want to say it. Um, she's obviously the niece of uh, Julia Roberts. I believe she's the daughter of Eric Roberts. I'm not sure. I can't be sure. She's been in a couple films. She obviously she was in uh, movies uh, or TV series like Scream Queens. Obviously, an American Horror Story where they they waste her all the time, pretty much. Um, but she uh, there's a horror movie that she was in. Let me see what she was, it was called. Um, it's about evilness and and boiler rooms. Black Coat's Daughter. Go watch that movie. Fantastic movie with Emma Robertson. And there's a scene where she laughs where it's like one of the most chilling sequences I've ever seen. But the movie starts out with this. It's almost like, um, obviously, it's either like Hunger Games, stuff like that. A running Man type of setup for this film where it's, it's going to be a wide variety of Republicans or right-wing characters that are the main protagonists that are being hunted down. And this is the main reason why there was a big uproar on the internet basically saying... Hey, why you make a movie where you're slaughtering Republicans? This is like porn for liberals. And maybe it is for some liberals or some other people. But uh, you would think if you're making your character... If you're making Republicans the the main characters that are victimized and they overtake the liberal bad guys, isn't that a good thing to see? Are they afraid that people are going to watch movies that are going to start hunting uh, Republicans down or something? I, I don't get it. Whatever. That's just... Sometimes there's an audience where they're like, oh, you can't, you can't uh, put this in a film because then people will do it. And then on the, other, the same side, they'll be like, oh, wait a minute. Uh, why are you trying to censor this movie? This is America. You should be able to watch this. Uh, why are you making guns look bad? So it's like this movie is a walking sort of political argument. Um, whatever. It's a fucking movie. I get it. I, I understand there's crazy people that watch films and then they do crazy, stupid shit. Uh, and I wish that wasn't the case, but people are fucking stupid. People are stupid. I have no hope in humanity. They're all dumb. Everybody's stupid. I hate, I hate everybody. But with this film, I enjoyed it. Uh, Hilary Swank is the big bad in this film, and she does a great sort of antagonistic character. I have I am sort of ambivalent on Hilary Swank. I think she's a good actor, but as in her in movies, I haven't really seen. I haven't. I know the ending of Million Dollar Baby, so I don't even want to watch that because that's fucking depressing. But uh, I remember seeing her in this really bad movie called The Black Dahlia, and she she was like a femme fatale in that. She was great in that, too. So she's really good in this, but in a more comical way. And it's funny how you sort of see both sides of an argument in this, because it, it ends up being the point of the movie is that it's not even a political reason for what happens in the movie, which is even funnier. It's just sort of this dark, dark uh, irony. Uh, about the whole process of this movie, the gore is fantastic. You get a Ethan Suppley is in this movie, and he is a little bit of a conspiracy guy that you see on the right wing. You see a uh, uh, lots of lots of various types of uh, right wing stereotypes. Obviously, like I just said, uh, you see left. You see what. People think are the left wing elitists. Uh, one of them being um, Glenn Howardin from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. A lot of funny character moments in this movie. It's a very funny movie, and I'm trying not to get too political in this film uh, about this film because you can't say anything without it being perceived as a right or left thing. And this just happened to be a liberal movie where they were sort of goofing on liberal elites, but then people on whatever sides were like, hey, wait a minute, this is a. Uh, this is a, an anti-right film when it's actually not. It's sort of an ambivalent take on both sides. And, and it's showing the insanity that both sides do or get into. Sort of smug or violent rhetoric about each side. It's just so... F and it's a great film. I actually really enjoyed this film a lot. And I don't want to spoil it. The violence is graphic. It's gory. It's super funny. Uh, there's great character work in it the action sequences are great 
a really cool um, female antagonist with, I mean, pat- protagonist, I guess, depending on what fucking side of the uh, political scheme you're on, uh, is Crystal, uh, Betty Gilpin is Crystal, I can't say enough. That's my main, 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 main recommendation in this film is just seeing it for her character work in this movie. Um, it's short, it's sweet, it gets its job done, it's all a misunderstanding, but it's so fucking good. And I really, really stress that you should watch this film. I, I think anybody can see it, right or left, and they would enjoy it if they got... Stop listening to the fucking... Whichever media side you're on, which is biased, both sides. Um, but anyway, I would give this movie a total uh, an 8, 7.5, or 7.5 out of 10. Uh, getting into a car with a guy who has sold you out to the elites... And with that, this has been The Hardy Construction. Thanks for listening.